Yeah. And they say it started in New York where they was doing that. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, this guy. Damn that boy. This the same team? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> this ain't the same team, Roy. What's good? Oh, like, we got Bleak in the building, man. God damn Bleak. Bleak, this might be your year right here. Get a shooter. In a, in a six eight, six nine. Damn, my fuck. Good day. I'm bad. Good pass. Decent shot, not a good shot. I could have found some damage. Boy, paint. Roy, you wrap me. For uh, rip real. How long, Bleak? Let me, give me a second. Made my beer. I can play three and four. Pinch me. That's a bad shot. Don't throw it. Throw it. Okay. It's all good. Good pass up. Fort pick. Let me do that. Where are you? Back door. That's good. Where are you? Big bucket. <laughs> ah, that's tough. That's tough. Hey, pinch cut. We can live with these guys shooting. We don't know who can shoot. Good pinch. That's tough. Open. That should be two points. I got your middle. Good D. Good D. That's a stop. Raw your paint. Good bucket. Good rebound. Great pass. That's green. Three. Three minutes. And then you gotta stop it at the That's why I, I did it. <laughs> That's a <laughs> Hey, you sound like one of my uh, classmates. He made one three, he a center, and he wouldn't shoot the ball no more. Bruh, for real. He went out with a bang. He he still talk about it to this day. He still talk about that. I'm the only nigga 100%. Hey, 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 you gotta stop it before one minute. And then, cause he, he gonna start bubbling up to the top. Hey, no threes. We in we in control. Good stuff, sport. Nice. Damn, I fucked up though, cause I ain't even rotate yo dude. I went to Royal man. <laughs> Good damn. Hey, look at the shot clock. No fouls. Rebound. Good teamwork. Great jump. This shit playing volleyball. Rory, set me a pick. Sport, go through. Rory, paint. When you... Okay. Sport, come up. Rory, stay down. Sport, slip. <laughs> oh, man. It's real out here in the field. Good D. 
You got steel? Okay, that's easy. But it ain't real though. On ball steals is tough this year. So you'll learn. You ain't played yet. I got you. Man, I should have stayed then. Rebound. I lost him. Damn, I gave that up. That's on me. For it. No shirt ain't paying attention, man. Got <laughs> Crip, he sleep. Good pension. Get rebound. It tell you nobody can't shoot yet, so we can have. Man, look at this shit. Okay. I like that. My first time doing that. Uh-uh. Yeah. They just gave me an animation. That's green. So, the... the Steel wise, the pass lane is the true steals. On ball steals, I seen very few. Maybe you can be an exception. <laughs> Damn, Roy, how big you say you was? Up, man. Who was doing that to you like that? Oh, that's two points. Nope. Bro, you cut to the paint. Good move. That's a bad pass, bro. Bad shot too. Take that too, Roy. <laughs> Man, <laughs> sport. Pick pop. Pop right. It is, but it's only if you if you ready for that. This shit. Yeah, that's a shot. Rebound. All right, there you go. Game. Good teamwork. Thank you. Guys, let's talk about five of the biggest lies that we've all been conditioned to believe about money, but it's really not true. Let's talk about it. So guys, the first big lie that we've been taught to believe about money or been conditioned to believe about money is that money is somehow complicated. Being better with money, getting better with money, becoming wealthy, building wealth, whatever you want to call it, becoming rich, becoming a millionaire, People think that money is complicated and money is rocket science. It's difficult. It's something that only a few people can learn to do and learn to have and learn to manage. You know, I'm just not good. With, I've heard people say, I'm just not good with money. Listen, the truth is this. Getting wealth is not about the numbers. The math is easy. The math is not complicated. The most difficult thing about money is the behaviors that's associated with being better with money or being good with money or understanding how to manage money. Managing money is like managing us. 
because we're managing our decisions with money. Being good with money, building wealth, having more money is about behaviors. Money is not complicated. Investing is not complicated. Growing wealth is not complicated. The only reason money becomes hard is when we cannot control ourselves or we feel a sense of being out of control and not having the ability to make decisions. Or if we don't believe that we can manage money. This is about belief. It's about behavior. It's about a thought process. It's about mentality and how your mindset is. A lot of people have been taught and conditioned that it's just too difficult. They just can't do it. It's too hard. That's not true. You just have to find a way to live on less than you make. Be organized with money by doing a written budget every single month and then checking and monitoring your net worth statement over the course of a year, at least two or three times a year. Living below your means, buying assets that go up in, up in value, staying out of bad debt on things going down in value as much as possible. Automating your investments, making sure you have an emergency fund in case things go wrong or when things go wrong. Look, monitor your spending, invest some money along the way so you have something for the future, right? These are basic, simple principles that are difficult for people to do because you think money is hard when all you got to do is manage your behaviors and money won't be as complicated. Now, the second biggest lie that we're conditioned to believe about money is that Money just takes too long. I don't have 10, 15, 20, 30 years. I've had people who were 25 years old that said, I don't have 10, 15 years to wait. Listen, money takes time for most of us. Look, most of us are not going to start a business or have an invention that's going to go crazy and all of a sudden we're going to be millionaires and gazillionaires. That don't happen in the real world. In the real world, you have to be patient. You got to take your time. You got to relax and do things the right way. Make good choices. Be patient. Be disciplined. Hold on. It's going to come. It just takes some time. There's compound interest that takes 5, 10, 20 years to actually show itself in a big way. Right. But a lot of people don't want that. They want to get rich quick. They want it right now. But look, if, you, if we're talking about investing, real estate, stock market, time is your best friend. Time is what you want. You want time because time is going to multiply exponentially your rates of return, what you get back. Compound interest is, is a beast. Here's a good way to look at investing over a long period of time. Look, the most important thing is your investment rate. How much of your money that you're bringing in are you investing in assets going up in value? Do you put in 3% of the paycheck you receive every two weeks from your job? Do you put 3% into your 401k or do you put 15%? That makes a difference because you can get to where you want to get eventually a whole lot quicker with a whole lot more money if you increase the amount of money you actually putting towards investing, putting towards assets going up in value like real estate, like the stock market. Look, you make $50,000 a year and you take 3% of your earnings and you invest it in the stock market and you get a 9% average annual rate of return on that 3% of $50,000. Over the course of 15 years, that'll probably equal close to $50,000. 3%. But look, if you said I make $50,000 a year and I'm going to go way out of my way and I'm going to put 15% of my money into investing in the stock market, getting an average annual rate of return of 9% over the course of 15 years, you'd have close to $250,000 after those 15 years are up. So the difference between the 3% and the 15% of your money going towards the stock market, investing in the stock market, can be the difference in over $200,000 over the course of 15 years, right? But the problem is most people don't want to do that. They don't want to sacrifice and be patient because they think it just takes too long. Is it going to take a little longer for most of us? Yeah, most of us are not getting rich or becoming a millionaire in five years. That's, that's the truth. But if you're 25 or 30 years old or 40 years old, 15 years is doable. 10 years is doable. We got to get away from this mentality that says building wealth takes too long. You're alive for 70, 80 years. What's 15 years to get a quarter of a million dollars, $250,000? If we just invest more money, we'll build more money up faster. But it's going to take some time. You got to be patient. Now, the third lie that we've been conditioned to believe about money is that you have to start with money. Is that all those people over there, they inherited that money. Oh man, they, their parents left them some money. Their mom left them some land and some houses. Look, most people, 
who are millionaires in America, some 75 or 80 percent, depending on what study you read, didn't get an inheritance. Nobody gave them anything. Nobody provided them with a leg up and a start. The truth is there are millions upon millions of millionaires in America who started with nothing, who started without a dime and nobody giving them anything. You need a plan. You need some belief and hope. You need some work ethic. You need some discipline. You need some patience. Nowhere in there did I say you need some money. Start with what you have, where you're at, and go from there. Everybody comes from a different place in life. Some people come to life with middle-class parents who provide what they need. Some people come to this life with nothing. Some people come to this life with less than nothing. Who knows? You gotta start where you're at and move up from there. Look, everybody has to develop their own toolbox. So for some people, there's nothing in that toolbox. Some people have in their toolbox a good two-parent family, everybody's hard workers, college education. Some people have in their toolbox, there's a few people that have, hey, they have lots of money in the toolbox. But there's a lot of people that have nothing in the toolbox and got to start with nothing and got to start building up and putting maybe some education in the toolbox, maybe a trade in the toolbox, maybe a cybersecurity or IT certificate or degree from college in the toolbox. You start putting these things in the toolbox. Some people have partying and drinking and the wrong friends stuffed in the toolbox. What you have to do, your job over the next 20, 30, 40 years is start putting good stuff in the toolbox. Optimism, hope, belief, good solid habits, no debt, right? You're putting things in the toolbox that are gonna lead to some good outcomes with money, right? Because the money doesn't come first. You don't have to have the money first. You just gotta have a toolbox that has some good solid things in there. Maybe it's a good spiritual foundation, right? Maybe it's just integrity, character, and work ethic in the toolbox. But you gotta have something in that toolbox and you gotta be developing things along the way to put in that toolbox when you have no money. Making money and building wealth is a byproduct of the habits and it's a byproduct of the things that you choose to put in your toolbox when you get over 18 or over 20 or out of your parents' house and you're living on your own. What are you putting in the toolbox, your toolbox, that's gonna help you build wealth later on? help you build, start to build wealth along the way. So for some, listen, I am a testimony that I started life with not much. I was 30 years old and still had a negative $30,000 net worth to my name. I didn't have much in the toolbox at the age of 30. I had a college degree in the toolbox. I had some life experiences in the toolbox. I had a bunch of mistakes that I made in the toolbox, but I also had a work ethic in the toolbox, some discipline, in the toolbox, some capacity and wanting to learn more about money and building wealth in the toolbox. And I had some hope and some belief that things could get better and I can have a positive effect on my personal financial life. I had that in the toolbox. I didn't have no money, but I got started. So that taught me that you don't have to start building wealth with money. You start with whatever you got and then you build from there. Now, the fourth lie that we've been told with money, and a lot of us believe this, the first thing that comes to mind when we think about wealth is we think about those billionaires, right? Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, you name the richest, top 10 richest people in the world. When we start thinking about wealth, our mind automatically goes to those people. Because for some people, we think wealthy is somehow $10 million or $100 million and up. The truth is, Real wealth does not mean you have to have a billion dollars or a hundred million dollars. Look, I know people who live comfortably and have lived well and retired with a hundred and fifty thousand dollars, two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars. You don't have to have millions to be wealthy. Real wealth is actually the freedom to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it, and for how long you want to do it. That's wealth. When you have choices, you have real wealth. You don't need billions of dollars to have choices. Does it help to have some choice, have some money that helps you have some choices? Absolutely. But as long as you can position yourself where you are well taken care of, there's a level of wealth in that too. 
personal finance is personal. There's no set number that you need to be wealthy or to feel wealthy or to have wealth. So we can't get caught up into thinking, oh, wealth, that's not what. No, wealth is whatever you need to have the choices to make your own decisions about what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it, how long you plan to do it. If you can do that, there's a level of wealth there. It don't take Jeff Bezos money to feel a sense of wealth and it don't take a million dollars either. Now the fifth lie that we've been conditioned to believe, and this is a big one guys, there's too many people that think money's gonna make you happy. Money equals happiness. There's people that will comment on this video that will tell me, nah, you're wrong about that. Money will make you happy. Listen, I was broke for 30 years. I was middle class for 10 or 15 years and I've had a level of wealth in the last five, six, seven, eight years. Hear me when I tell you guys, money don't make you happy. Can money give you some freedoms of choice that I talked about? Of course, money can give you the opportunity to choose a different path or choose to do something different or choose to not work, right? We get that, but understand, you're gonna always have problems. Problems don't leave you because you become a millionaire. Problems don't leave you because you all of a sudden you have $45,000 in the bank. Money does not equate to happiness. And if you always believe that money equals happiness, then guess what? Anytime you don't have money, you're gonna automatically feel depressed, automatically feel stressed, automatically feel down, automatically feel out, automatically feel like quitting. So you gotta get in the mind frame to understand that just because you don't have money doesn't mean you can't have a level of joy. When you start equating money to happiness, ultimately you start chasing money because you're chasing happiness. Happiness is a feeling that comes and goes, right? It's an emotion. And if you're chasing an emotion by trying to get more money, you're never gonna get there. You're gonna always be chasing it. Money's not designed to make you happy. Money is not created and put there to make you happy. Money is designed to sustain your living, right? In terms of paying your bills, making sure you have food and all that good stuff. And it's also to grow as well. You wanna grow money. That's one of the purposes of money is to make sure money is growing and money makes more money. But money's not here to make you happy. One of the ways I know that money don't make you happy is that there's a lot of people that have a lot of money that are still unhappy, right? There's a lot of people that make a whole ton millionaires right billionaires unhappy see it's hard to realize this until you actually have some money when you have some money problems don't go away trouble doesn't go away you still have issues and problems and things that you have to deal with on the inside whether you have that nice car you buy that big old million dollar house cash you still got problems you might have a different set of problems but you still got problems but the more money you have the more you realize Money is not your answer to all your problems. It may answer a few money problems, a few freedom and choice problems, but it don't, it don't solve everything. Look, rich and wealthy people, millionaires, they got problems too. And there's a lot of them that are unhappy as well. You gotta deal with what's on the inside of you without regard to how much money you have. There's problems inside of you that don't go away that money can't fix. And you got to realize that, that we've been conditioned to think money is everything and money's going to solve everything. It won't. So there you have it, guys. That's five lies about money that we've been conditioned to believe. Drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts. And more importantly, share this video with friends, family, and your network of good people. Hey, the best person who's going to take care of the old you is the young you. Guys, take good care of yourself and take care of other people. Until the next video, peace. Take him, Roy. I'm on no shirt. That's deep for no shirt, though. Yeah. That's on me again. What your dude gonna help? Hey, you ready to shoot? Man, wow. Damn, it's just like old time. <laughs> the bell out. <laughs> Damn, that's big. Good teamwork, though. Good shit. Big rebound. For real. Good stuff, man. That was a tough game right there. Mm. <laughs> Little toughy.